I was asked again the other day, what is to you the mark of the beast? Well, I couldn't help but reply and say, well, the mark of the beast to me has everything to do with one of the greatest sins mankind can ever commit. It was committed by Lucifer himself, Nimrod in the Old Testament, and more than any other time in history, we are seeing it today, and it's pride. It is man exalting himself to be like God. Six, of course, being the number of man. Three sixes, we know that three is the number for God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, of course, the popular thinking is that there will be a mark placed upon our right hand or on our forehead. But we know the Bible speaks of our forehead speaking to our thought life and our right hand speaking of our authority. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. All authority, he said, has been given unto me. There is no doubt in my mind whether there be an actual antichrist appear on this earth and is already here, whether there be an actual mark placed upon our forehead or upon our hands. Of course, there's not a chance I would let that happen to me. But there's no doubt in my mind that pride surely does come before a fall. Sodom and Gomorrah was a place that had gone out of control. A people that believed they could do whatever they wanted to do and God had had enough. You look at what is occurring today. People believing they have the right to do whatever they want with their body, ignoring the right of the unborn child. We see men and women exchanging the natural for the unnatural in a way that we have never seen before with a pride and an arrogance, literally in the face of God. And today we see that for most people, the visual sign of a rainbow is far different than God's intended promise to mankind. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 29 verse 23, a man's pride will bring him low, but the humble in spirit will retain honor. We see in 1 John 2 verse 16, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And yet for those who love him, understand his ways and give their life to Christ, who humble themselves and pray, the Bible gives us this promise, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In Proverbs 11 verse 2, when pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. In Proverbs 8 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way, and the perverse mouth I hate. The truth is, where there is pride, we stop listening. Even for those who know Christ, who fall into sin, so often will cover that sin with a theology or a teaching that excuses them. Friends, brothers and sisters, may we be men and women of God that understand we can come to that throne of grace to stay in right relationship with Him. God is God. We gave our life to Him as a sinner. And so we work out this salvation, the Word says, with fear and trembling. It is as though we were carrying a precious vase, so precious that we dare not drop it. May we present the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to this world, a lost world, a prideful world. May we be men and women of God that present not through shouting, not through arguing, but through presenting Jesus, Jesus, God's personal expression of himself 
to mankind. In 1 John 1 9, this is the confidence that we have in him. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There are many today that say as a Christian we cannot sin and yet the word goes on to say if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Friends, we have this mercy, this grace. If you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, you have this right to come boldly to that throne of grace confess that and get rid of that and he said I'm just I'm able you're my child and to stay in right relationship with him pride gets in the road this mark of the beast when man exalts himself may the saved not behave like the sinner let the saved say amen Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We humble ourselves before a living God who is on the throne, able to do above, beyond, exceedingly more than we could ever ask or think. And so, Father, we know it's not about guilt and shame. You took all of that upon the cross. It's about humbling ourselves, coming before a living Father who does not reject us but embraces us and says, Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We thank you for that peace that passes all understanding. So, dear Heavenly Father, we lay our pride down, come before you, and declare Jesus Christ is Lord.